Hey Rob, welcome to uh, Dublin Growth Hackers this evening. Um, my understanding is you're giving a presentation today to the delegates? Yeah, yeah. I am indeed. Um, talking predominantly about my role at Halo. So uh, I've been working on the EMEA marketing side with Halo for the last two and a half years. And uh, I'll also be doing a little bit of this time, talking a little bit about my new startup called Prosper. Oh, great! Well done. So, um, so the, the the presentation is about those two those two businesses. Yeah, the, both great. Of them, yeah. Okay. And what do you want people to get out of out of uh, your your presentation today? Hopefully, they'll just they'll, they'll learn a little bit about how we launched Halo in Ireland um, okay. two and a half years ago. Um, you know, they might get some you know valid information about you know starting up in, in, uh, in Dublin with a smartphone app, how to grow, okay, um, particularly how to build a brand. Fantastic. So let me just ask you, what inspired you to start your own business? Um, I think there's a lot to be said for working for yourself, yeah. doing things for yourself. Um, I feel like we've got a really, really strong idea with Prosper. It's a, a smartphone app that connects you, connects you as a busy person with uh, a nutritionist. So, okay. you know, it's something I'm passionate about myself, and okay. uh, I feel like that's kind of, you know, the best place to be with something, you know, a bit of passion and uh, hopefully a good idea that's going to gain traction. Fantastic, I'm delighted. In fact, I've made a, a New Year's resolution to uh, cut out the rubbish I'm eating, so I'll definitely be using your service. Excellent. All right, Rob, thanks so much and good luck today, okay? Thank you very much. So, I don't know where they got that picture from, <laughs> I swear. Um, so my name is Rob Kumsky. I've been working with Halo since 2012 uh, as uh, a MIA marketing manager. Um, I do have a lot of slides, but I, sp I promise I'll get to them as quickly as I can. Um, so I'll go briefly through the Halo story uh, for those of you that don't know much about it. Um, quick little video. That's Halo in a nutshell. Um, we're currently live in 17 cities across the globe, starting in London and quickly moving to Dublin in 2012, and expanding across the United States, mainly the East Coast, and uh, Canada, and even as far as Japan. Um, we're now live in 20 plus Irish towns and cities. Um, we started in Dublin, quickly moved to Cork, Limerick, and Galway. And just this year, we've expanded to um, some other of the bigger towns and cities in Ireland. Um, launched in 2011 by three taxi drivers and three tech entrepreneurs. Um, our first office was a boat on the Thames, um, which was interesting. Um, and we've since moved to Somerset House in London. That's our, our HQ. Our uh, driver founders and our tech founders, um, these guys um, came up with the concept of connecting people through smartphones and they got in touch with these experienced entrepreneurs and, and Halo was born. And we have some of the best investors in the business, Excel Partners, Welling and Partners, Atomico, and they've invested in other great startups like uh, Foursquare and Twitter and Facebook. So we're in really, really good company there. Um, we've got over 20,000 five-star reviews on the App Store and we have over 50,000 drivers working across the world with Halo. Um, spot the Irish drivers on there. Um, and a Halo Hail is accepted everywhere in the world every two seconds. Um, one of my favorite stats is we've done enough jobs to travel to the moon and back 57 times. So I guess today I just kind of wanted to talk briefly about our launch in Ireland in 2012 and from my perspective, how to build a, a brand that can sustain itself um, from launch, you know, through through the growth phases. I'm um, going to talk a bit about our digital strategy, um, social and CRM, and finish up with a little bit about our product. So our brand and uh, our key objective before we launched was 
actually to, to create a distinctive brand identity for Halo. We wanted to do more than just launch a smartphone app. We wanted to build something that's going to live on for people, something that people will understand and have a global feel to the brand. Um, we wanted to um, build awareness, but also trust with the brand. It's really, really important for, for us as a taxi app, providing transport for people, um, putting them into cars with drivers. We wanted to give them that trust that what they were using was safe. Um, and obviously we wanted to, within our first year, reach over 55,000 registered customers. So our first kind of campaign actually focused very uh, heavily on the outdoor space. And some of you may have seen um, our, our sort of billboards, our transport links, um, restaurant and pub advertising, and we did some radio, uh, the likes of the Metro Herald, um, some, some desktop. We even did some ambient outdoor projecting um, videos onto walls. All of this with the, the aim of, of building that awareness and, and trust for the brand. Um, we also had a driver outreach strategy where we, I suppose, we, we were advertising on the outdoor and you know on press etc for specifically getting in front of drivers and, and building that and giving them that sort of awareness of the brand that we were ready to invest in it that this was going to be big and, and also as, as a knock-on effect it was something that the drivers were going to tell their passengers an awful lot about I'm sure everyone's been told about Halo at least once by a taxi driver um, also, you know, getting our sort of taxi advertising on cars, you know, in the taxi space was so, so important. And actually our post-awareness uh, survey uh, after our first campaign said that the most prominent awareness for, uh, or pr most prominent advertising for our, pass our customers was on cab advertising and word of mouth through drivers. So after all the money we spent on outdoor, our taxi drivers were the main place where people actually heard about the brand. Um, we also ran some partnerships, you know, partnering up with the likes of Drink Aware, the Jemison Dublin Film Festival. Um, but what I wanted to finish on was, it doesn't matter how much you actually invest in the media channels. What really, really, um, what I feel wor worked so well for us was the visual identity that and personality that we built from the brand from the word go. You know, you can throw all the money that you want at these channels, but if you don't have something that can actually, that people can resonate with, that people enjoy, uh, and that people sort of, um, perceive your brand as, you know, um, it, that, that was the most important element for us. So in terms of brand, it's not, about, as I said, it's not about, uh, about uh, how much you spend on your advertising. A brand is a promise, it's a living, breathing entity. And for us, it was all about our visual identity, the tone and personality that we created, um, quality, providing a quality service, providing quality customer service, and most of all, the consistency. If we're meant to be across 17 cities, we want people to experience the great Halo service in Ireland and to feel that it's the same when they go to London, to Madrid, Barcelona, or as far as Japan. So after launch, I wanted to go into a bit of detail on, on what our, our pain points were. So <coughs> certainly from an Irish perspective, we achieved a large amount of awareness. Um, lots of people downloaded the downloaded the app but we were seeing a drop off from download through to registration so all of these people that had the app on their phones but didn't have an account yet that they didn't register for an account but even for those that registered the registration and um, to the first hail the first job that they took there is a there is a drop off and um, we needed to get more jobs from our active customers and we we're also churning customers every three or four months there is a drop off of you know of, of, of customers so um, I suppose this is all part of the maturing um, piece of a startup. You know, you you start this with a small office, you have a small team, and you kind of fly by the seat of your pants. And as we began to mature, we started to introduce our own sort of marketing KPIs. We um, built a small data scientist team, so really, really getting to grips with the data that we had at our disposal. And we focused heavily as a marketing team on our cost per registered user driving that down as much as possible. Um, our, our jobs for registered user, increasing that. Our registered users, particularly the quality of the users that we were getting in, the ones that we're paying good money for, we want users that, can, that we can guarantee will actually you know, be in need of a taxi and will you know, take jobs through, through, the, through the app. <coughs> so in terms of our current marketing structure, brand sits above um, above the function 
and then we split ourselves by region in terms of EMEA and North America, and we've got a performance marketing function, we have a really, really important CRM function, we have our PR and social side, and then we're backed up by a, a, a data team. And we see our, our, uh, our marketing function has been very much led by this customer life cycle, from acquisition all the way through to recovery or reactivating a customer, somebody that's gone dormant or that's left the service. And our channels being the performance CRM social, uh, permeating through each of those elements. So from an acquisition perspective, it's the registration. Then we're hitting them with CRM, they're nudged to first hail, welcome them to the service. Growth and retention, it's all about engaging them, rewarding them for using Halo. Advocacy, using our current base of customers to refer friends, that word of mouth piece. Reactivation, nudging people to use the service again if they've gone dormant, or what we call RASP, recovering a stranded passenger, somebody who's tried to hail and hasn't been successful and is getting pissed off at us. So it, what I believe to be important is, is not just growth, but it's the sustainable growth. And that's where you know, the, the strength of brand and the sort of front-loaded investment in brand is so important. So if there's three things that you can take away from this talk, it's invest up front in your brand, it's in terms of digital, and I'll talk about this a bit in a bit, it's be early and stay fresh, and from a social perspective, it's getting the right message to the right audience at the right moment. So from a digital perspective, we focus heavily on the acquisition piece, there's a little bit of digital that we put into the reactivation piece as well. Our, activation, our, our digital strategy is <coughs> split in two. We've got our acquisition, which is mainly led by Facebook app install ads, promoted tweets with install links, or at the moment is the, uh, the beta testing of Twitter's mobile install ads, and some mobile app ads, in-app ads. But we also focus on paid social and engagement. Our Twitter promoted account has been really important to building uh, a large community of users, and promoted tweets, which can lead to both engagement and installs of our app, and some Facebook fan acquisition. In terms of our creative, we've got our Facebook install ads, um, focusing on being as local as possible. So obviously from Dublin, you've got the Haypenny Bridge. Um, you know, we're finding that people will engage when something is as relevant to them as possible. We've got our mobile display and the promoted tweets uh, which I'll go into a little bit later. Um, from a digital perspective, the, the three most important things that we've found is particularly getting to grips with our acquisition tracking. So understanding, as I mean, starting out as a young startup, you know, we're acquiring users from everywhere, anywhere that we can get them, basically, um, and that has kind of gradually evolved to a point where we're using the likes of has offers, mixed panel to really, really dig into the data, understand the quality of the users, where the quality users are coming from, how much we're really paying for them, and what the lifetime value of those customers is. We also found that coming in early, using um, products, like we were one of the first brands in, in Ireland in 2012 to start using promoted tweets and promoted accounts. Um, going in with that new media early, before fatigue sets in, before competitors start to drive up costs. And we've seen this in other cities like London where you know, the cost is, is dr dramatically higher than what we were seeing in, in the first couple of months in Ireland. And obviously, frequent fresh creative is, is so, so important, particularly from an image perspective. Um, and something that's hard for us is, is broadening the number of channels that we can test. So being a local brand, we're limited in what we can actually use and, and you know, the sort of costs that we can achieve. So that's something that we're constantly try, trying to, to do, is, is broaden the number of channels that we can actually use. And from a social and CRM perspective, so um, CRM kind of is permeating through each of these stages, but I suppose where it's most important is that activation piece, so when somebody registers that they're receiving a welcome email, that, they're actually, that we're acknowledging that they've joined the service. Um, growth and retention, you know, it's sort of rewarding these people where possible, you know, some of you may have received emails from Halo saying, you know, thanks for, you know, doing X amount of jobs, or um, an email that I'll show you later is 
uh, solely targeted people who will take trips to the airport. Um, and then there's the reactivation piece, so where possible, um, uh, sending emails to those that have maybe not taken a job in two or three months and we're trying to get them back into the service. So as I said, for us social and for, for anyone, it should be about the right message to the right audience in the right moment. And it's something that we're sort of getting to grips with ourselves over time. Um, something I just wanted to put up there was, obviously we're all in the midst of the Garth Brooks um, stuff. Um, so in terms of hitting people at the right moment, we hit people with a tweet the other day to say, we'll get you to your friends in high and low places. First 400 to use the code, the dance get five year old. And obviously there's a great reaction to that tweet because you know people are seeing this, you know, everyone's talking about it. We're looking for people to do work, you know, to, to put jobs through the system. And you know, 400 codes at a five euro uh, um, price point for us, that's not an awful lot of money for us to spend getting direct jobs where we might have put that two grand into something um, else entirely that's not going to directly benefit us. Um, another example, the solstice weekend. So this, these, these sort of um, in the moment tweets, being really, really reactive and on the ball with sending this sort of stuff out to your community, having previously built a community and having previously spent a lot of time working on the brand and getting the tone right, that's been the most, you know, some of the most effective channels for us to, to achieve quick growth. Another um, uh, piece that we did recently was we, um, you know, getting into the data, understanding our users and understanding you know, even something as silly as, uh, you know, who our users are, you know? And we hit this on, on Facebook um, a couple of weeks back and rewarded people with the name Karen or Barry uh, and gave them a 10 euro credit. And obviously we got a great reaction to that and people telling their friends whose names were Karen and um, we actually had a Karen Barry who was looking for 20 euros. <laughs> um, that's done really, really well for us. And from a CRM perspective, Again, getting into the date and understanding, well, you know, for example, not many people know that they can get a halo from the airport. Many would get a halo to the airport, but we wanted to increase how many people were actually getting one from the terminal. So getting, digging into the data, understanding who's taking jobs to the airport, hitting them with a really, really nice email, rewarding them with 10 euro, and suggesting, here's 10 euro for when you get back. Um, again, really, really great reaction and um, prov you know, providing awareness of something that they weren't already uh, using. And again, the partnership side, you know, using a, a well-known brand like JustEat.ie, um, we'll partner up regularly, we'll get a, a voucher for a takeaway from Just Eat, we'll provide the credits, and we'll reward our, our community on Facebook or on Twitter with a, a simple party. It costs very, very little, but it gets that great engagement going. And finally, from a product perspective, you know, there's so much in, within our app uh, that we can do to, um, to really drive the brand home. You know, we're constantly iterating on our in-app experience. Um, I actually haven't included it here, but regularly we'll drop little Easter eggs like um, we call our blue man here, Barty. And um, sometimes we'll put a Christmas hat on Barty or just little surprises in-app for people. Even something as simple as the the tour that we've um, got in app. So when you first register, you're asked to go through a, a originally it was a 12 step process and we were finding that the, the download to registration rate was actually um, quite, uh, it was about, I think it was a 30% download to registration rate. So there's a huge amount of wastage there. Um, so we cut down our, um, our tour to six or seven slides and so a gradual uplift. And um, similarly, App updates. Um, we got creative with our, our uh, copy on the the app store for an app update, and and found that people were you know really really kind of pleasantly surprised and tweeting that uh, you know Halo were getting nice and creative with this sort of thing. So to finish up uh, on the Halo side, as I said earlier, the the three key points I think to to, to bring away from this: uh, invest upfront in your brand and let it permeate through every channel and everything that you do. From a digital perspective, we've found that being early and staying fresh with our, with our creative and our approach has, has, has done good, great things for us. And from a social perspective, it's getting the right message to the right audience in the right moment. Um, so that's it from 
the Halo side, I just wanted to finish by quickly talking about my next venture. Um, this is something that I've been working on for a while, and I thought this was a good opportunity to, to get it out there. Um, it's a startup called Prosper. Um, it's a, it's a health, star, uh, a health uh, app for smartphones. Um, just a little bit to understand the global health market, particularly the mobile health market, uh, it's a 20.7 20 billion market by 2018, so this is a huge, huge market um, for the next couple of years. 29.1 million people in the EU, EU are obese, or will be obese by the, the year 2017, and they, they may use mobile health solutions regularly. But interestingly, Europe will be the biggest mobile health market by 2017, with a 6.9 billion market opportunity. So this is obviously a huge space. So what we realized in Prosper was that there's a real kind of problem there that we all work hard, people aren't at their best, they're working really, really hard, they're focusing on, on work, they're focusing on getting to work, they're focusing on downloading from work, and they're not really focusing on things that, that the most important things that matter in life. So what Prosper does is it helps people to realize their potential, we're giving people the tools that they need to become healthier, happier, more productive. So what does that mean? We're connecting busy people with nutrition professionals through the smartphone. So to go into a bit of detail on the app itself, we connect you with an existing nutritionist that you're using or with a new nutritionist. We help you to track your food with a simple food picture diary, and we give you feedback from your, from your uh, nutritionist throughout the day on what you're eating. Um, there's some simple data capture asking you about how your day is going because Everything that, you eat, everything that you do throughout the day and how you feel is interlinked with what you're eating. Um, and there's a community aspect. See what others around you are eating and you're getting encouragement and hopefully some great recipes as well. Um, uh, obviously something else that we're working on is from an Android Wear perspective, um, using that sort of wearable technology to um, give you feedback on what you're eating and to sort of interact with you throughout the day. So we have two models. We are targeting nutritionists directly and giving them an app to use and sort of adding value to their current relationship with clients. And we're also connecting with consumers directly. Um, so from a pricing perspective, we're going to be charging $4.99 per month for clients to use the service uh, if they're connecting with a nutritionist. But we're also offering nutritionists sort of a a gold or a platinum model where we'll give them dashboard, analytics and, and CRM capabilities to really, really add value to their, to their current relationship with their clients. Um, so just to finish up, our team, it's myself, we've got a, a lead developer, Fabio, we've got um, a guy called Gary who's working on our business development side and he's actually a qualified nutritionist and Dave working on the marketing and operations side and we've got a great team of advisors helping us at the moment with some names that you'll probably recognize. Um, so it's just a good opportunity to tell you a bit about that service. So that's it really. Thanks very much. You uh, had a, an awful amount of channels there, uh, billboards, uh, mm. digital, etc. So how do you actually determine uh, where your needs come from? Where my where your leads come from. So whether whether it be um, a customer or a taxi. So yeah. how do you decide originally that they've seen us on a billboard or they've yeah. seen us on Facebook or Yeah. Um I suppose that from from the beginning it was really kind of, you know, throwing stuff at the wall and hoping it would stick and trying as many channels as possible. Um, from traditional uh, platform like traditional advertising like um, billboards, radio is actually very, very hard to determine but it's much more about, for us, it's about awareness and getting in front of as many people as possible. But obviously, gradually over time, we've invested much heavier in performance marketing, digital channels, because we know where these users are coming from and how good they are from a quality perspective, and we can actively drive down the cost. So it sort of develops like that over time. Yeah, I guess I was hoping that somebody with a budget like Halo would have figured out the conundrum of how to uh, measure billboards. Yeah, very, very hard to do. Yeah. And you know, something that we've gradually invested less in, but I suppose you can't underestimate the power that that has to drive awareness and build trust. And it was really, really important. I mean, that's kind of why I, I stated at the beginning that um, you know, it's, it's not kind of about spending that money in the channel. I think for us, it was 
the brand building exercise that was the most important act aspect. Okay, another question? Come on. Um, do you use some third-party um, tools to manage those activation codes, or is it something that's built into your CRM? We actually built that bespoke, so we have our own system to do that, and we're sort of adding to it over time and adding kind of more capabilities. So in the beginning, it was very primitive, um, and we're adding sort of things like limited redemptions, expiry dates, and hopefully that'll get even better um, in the next couple of months. Okay, so it's a custom platform, is that what you're saying? Custom platform. Custom yeah. platform, okay. Any other questions? When you win in the morning, what's the first report you look at? It's <laughs> a good question. Um, I suppose you know mainly it's kind of customer registrations for, for the marketing team. It's where those registrations are coming from, particularly if it's um, you know a new market we're most interested. But one of the other things I suppose is, is where our customers are hailing from and how many of those are being stranded, so that we can actually work on our on our supply side. The worst thing is having a, a service that isn't providing supply to their to our customers. Okay, so your customer acquisition funnel is what you look at first. For right. me, yes, as a marketer, yeah. yeah. John? Rob, I just wonder, did you have um, adoption hurdles to overcome with uh, cloud drivers? And if you did, how would you overcome um, hurdles like that? In the yes, business? that's a good question as well. I mean, in Ireland, there is a real, real hunger for the service. Um, dry, you know, there's an oversupply of taxis in the Irish market. Um, There'd been a couple of smartphone apps pre prior to Halo, and we had a slight hurdle there that they hadn't really succeeded, so drivers were a little bit iffy about that aspect. But um, from here, there was very few uh, problems with it. But we did advertise, and we provided a lot of education. We train our drivers very, very well. We've got a great team of driver partners, you know, ex-taxi drivers in our office in Dublin that you know, are sort of the face of the brand for taxi drivers, and they've provided great. You know, in other cities, there are where there's you know a less a lesser supply, they don't need the service as much, so there's more challenges. But Ireland was was a, a good market for it. Okay, I have a question for you. You've got a background in Adland and big budgets, and now you're in Halo, which is a success, successful company. Yeah. So what are you going to spend your first fifty grand on for your new uh, venture? Um, I mean, I think you can't ignore the power of, of Facebook and Facebook install ads. So from a customer acquisition perspective, that. That's been really, really powerful for Halo, and you know it's something that I know will work uh, in the Irish market for us. Okay. One more question before we go. Oh yeah. Thank you. Um, can I ask you about the investment model? Like, did the London office kind of go right? You're setting up in Ireland. Uh, you've got two years to break even, throw the kitchen sink, acquire as many, acquire X amount of customers before. How does that work? Do you, do you literally are just trying to sat, you know, literally saturate the market, lock up, acquire everyone, and that will pay for itself by X date? Is that how it would look up when you go into a country? I, I don't, I mean, certainly in the early days, um, there, there was a real lack of understanding of the Dublin market. Um, one of our, like the, our sort of head of EMEA happens to be an Irish guy, and he convinced them to to launch here and we blew them out of the water with what we were actually able to do. So the expectation was actually quite low. But um, in retrospect, kind of investing as much as we did up front has given us the position that we have here. So when competitors like I won't mention names come into the market, um, you know, it gives us a much stronger here to to not not just defend ourselves but actually for them, you know, to have to fight against well, but that, that. that's kinda of saying you have to be very brave and just sink a load of money in that losses in the first year or two or so, is that kind of what you're saying? Um, we, we weren't making losses for very long here. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, things things went, I suppose the expectation was low in the beginning, but things like this would be probably arguably our most su successful market. Uh, I've got a question. So let, let's talk about the people you don't want to talk about. So, so with Uber, for example, yeah. in San Francisco and what they're doing over there, uh, and you know their, their model of going direct to not necessarily verified drivers. Mm. Do you think that's that's a risk in somewhere like Ireland because of all the legislation that's, <coughs> that's in place? Or do you think it's even possible? Um, I mean, all I can speak for, like I can speak from the Halo perspective. So, I mean, we work with reg legislation and regulators. We verify our drivers in the right way, and we provide a really, really good service. And that's done well for us in the UK, Spain, Ireland. You know, it's more difficult in the States because there's more disruption. But um, you know, for us, that works really, really well. 
One more question. One more question. Then. Just talk a little bit about how you started engaging with Google here and the big corporates when you started looking at their corporates. Your big questions are? Corporates. Yeah, just starting to engage with some of the big partners here. Like, how, as a small startup, how did that kind of conversation go? Um, I mean, we, we didn't really engage. I mean, we kind of came in and did our own thing. So, um, you know, I mean, are you more talking from a business development perspective? Yeah, business development perspective. yeah I mean, we just kind of relied on our, our own model and we grew the, the business sort of ourselves. And, you know, I suppose gradually we've worked with, you know, smaller partners from an advertising perspective, but um, there wasn't much of, of a conversation there. Okay. okay.